Hello, today we're going to see how you can create a TanStack table having data coming from TanStack query and having all the parameters being handled by TanStack router. Let's begin by looking at data fetching with TanStack query. We can go in our route because we're using TanStack router and well, everything is here. We can call use query and call our backend with our filters. We're going to see in a moment how the filter work. But in short, this is called every time something changes on the filters and the data will get automatically here and we can call data.result and this will be basically the array of our results. Now, I don't have a real backend in this example, it's just a call on another file, but let's imagine this comes from the database and all of this is in fact coming from an API call. So here I can, for example, change page and you can see that I keep getting the data. But the last thing I wanted to mention about use query here is the usage of keep previous data as placeholder data. Why does it matter? Well, let me remove it for a second. In our API, we simulated that there's 100 milliseconds between each call. So without keep previous data here, if you go on the browser and we change page, you see the items are disappearing for a second, actually for 100 milliseconds. And well, with keep previous data under placeholder data, this is not gonna happen and that's really useful. But let's move on on the TanStack router implementation because it's probably more interesting. So router here is handling our filters, which is in fact the local state of the application. With use query getting the async state, the data from the backend, filters is the local state and instead of using set state, we're gonna use something hidden inside use filters that is in this case, navigate. And this is because we do not want, like I say, to use use state, but we want that our filters are coming from our route. And every time we want to set a filter, we basically navigate on a new route with the new filters. And here, how do I get the types right? Because here filters, you see has some values. And for example, if I type filters, you see I've got some fields and these are the fields coming from our user object. We're gonna see them in a moment. And also the pagination values and also an additional field to handle sorting. So here everything comes for free because we say that the validate search function returns something that is called user filters. And here, for example, if I wanted to use them right away on my component, I could write const filters too, just to not clash with the name, and route.useSearch. And with that, you can see that filters too is again having all the types I want. So the type safety is handled by TanStack router. And to be honest, this isn't actually validating anything. This is just typing the values and telling TypeScript that this will be the accepted filters. I made an entire video dedicated on how to use Validate Search. You can find it on my channel. But for now, let's look at the integration, how the libraries are interacting with each other. So let's keep it simple. But in theory, you should making sure that here the values are also validated and not only getting the type. So what is this user filter type and why this type has a lot of fields having different purposes? Let's have a quick look at how this type is defined. So here user filters is a filter object that takes user as a generic. So user is our user, the entity you can find here which ID, first name, last name, and age. But I created a custom type, which takes our user type, pagination params, which is just page index and page size, and sort params, which is an object with a string that will be the name of our field and ascending or descending. This is just a common convention. You don't have to do it that way, but I find it quite handy. So I wanted to show this to you. Going back for a moment into our use filters hook, this is just to make it a little bit generic and reuse it this hook in other pages. But in short, like I said, everything it does is getting the filters and doing the navigate. So now that we know that TanStack router is managing our filter with the local state, TanStack query is managing our data with the async state, we have to interact with TanStack table. How do we do that? Well, here we compute a couple more objects and we threw everything into this table component, which unsurprisingly is just a wrapper of the user react table that is coming from TanStack react table. And here it's worth mentioning, there are these three fields here, manual filtering, sorting, and pagination that are set to true. And the reason is that TanStack table comes with a lot of features coming for free, as long as you handle everything locally. You can see a lot of examples here, so you can filter, order, in columns group, you can do a lot of stuff. But as soon as you specify that you want to filter, sort, and paginate with your backend, 
Then you have to tell Tanstack table that it shouldn't care about those aspects because we're gonna do that manually. But let's now talk about the first big feature that is filtering. First of all, as usual, I recommend having a look at the example in the documentation because here you're gonna find a lot of really valid example covering pretty much most of your cases. And in fact, most of my code is copy pasted basically from the filtering example because it was already doing what it had to do with the only difference that in this case, when we type something on the inputs that are the inputs here, we do not want table to handle everything automatically because we say it manual to true, but we're gonna call on filter change that is in fact a function that we're passing from the outside. And here in this on filter change, we say that we want a partial of t with t being our data. So this is gonna be a partial of our user object, which we can find here. And it can take ID, first name, last name, or age. This component, the buzz input, is rendered on top of each column, as you can also see from here. For each header, we're gonna render an input, and the key we're specifying is defined in field meta. But what is filter key? Let's see that in a moment. This is the column definition for Tanstack table, and each object here is in fact represented a column. You can see immediately here that we can specify something under the meta object, which can be entirely custom. You can expand this interface by adding your custom keys. I wanted to specify filter key that has to be a key of our object and also a filter variant. Because if you notice, some fields are text input while some other fields are numeric inputs. So I just wanted a way here in the table to specify if I wanted my input to be number or text. And if you see some kind of duplication here, you see accessor key is always the same as filter key. It's to get a little bit more flexible because nothing stops you from creating a column that is in fact called full name. And here you've got accessor function that defines how to access to this data. And this is perfectly fine. If you go on the table, you will find that first name now has name and last name. So how do I know that I want to filter for the first name only? In this case, that's exactly why I needed to specify manually a filter key. And here I say that I wanted it to be only a key of the main object, but you can do pretty much whatever you want here. Let me clean this up. And if we go back on our table for a second, let's see what happens when on filter change is called. So we say this is coming from the props, so it is coming from the outside. And here on filter change takes the filter we're gonna pass in and calls our set filters. That as we already saw, it is not actually a use state, but set filters coming from here is doing a navigate. So to make it simple, every time something changes here, we're performing a navigate with the new search params. And here you're noticing there's a clean empty params, but it's just a utility function to remove empty params. But in fact, it will also work without this extra step. Anyway, if you're finding this video useful, don't forget that you can also subscribe to the channel to support me. And with that sorted out, let's sort our columns. I'm sorry for this terrible joke, but I wanted a hook to show you how you can sort your columns on Tanstack table by using the state on Tanstack router. Here you can see that I've got the fill key and the sending or ascending depending on every time I click here in the button. But where is this data coming from? Let's have a look. First of all, in our table, you can find this kind of weird syntax you can also find in the examples, but it is pretty much rendering the icons depending on the sorting state, which can be Sending, the sending, or false in case it is not sorted, and these are the icons render. And every time you click in this div, it will call this function, which will trigger the sorting mechanism working inside Tanstack table. So if this is handled internally, how do we react to that? And the answer is on sorting change. Tanstack table lets us use a callback, which is fired every time the sorting state changes. So once again, this that is passed to use React table is something that comes from the outside, from our props. And inside our user component, we can indeed pass our onsorting change, which unsurprisingly, after computing the new state, we'll call set filters once again, the same we called on filter change. And this time it will explicitly populate sort by. Now, let me mention one more thing. Here, I wanted to define that sort by is string.ascending or string.descending. But in fact, if we go on Tanstack table, we see that onsorting change is in fact a function that uses sorting state. That is an array of columns that are objects with these two fields. 
Dunstack Router can handle arrays, but I wanted to map my field just to show that you can also do that. So if we go back on our users component, you see that I'm passing the new sorting state, that is a sorting state, to a state to sort by function. This is a simple mapping function with one way and the opposite, just to show you that you can in fact map the handling of Dunstack table and use your custom definition every time you want to set the parameters. In this case, I'm basically just taking the first sorting state, taking the ID, which would be the field. Remember the columns we specified here. Basically, these values will be passed here in the ID, and then we can say if we want to make it descending or ascending. And with that, we can set the filters so that they show up here in the URL. And in order to inform table that our state has changed, we can do pretty much the same here. So we call sort by to state, that is the opposite function creating our sorting state that we're passing again to our table. Well, actually to our table wrapper, but again, sorting is the parameter that we feed once again in the state of use react table. So I hope it's not too complicated, but in short, we're basically just setting something when table tells us to do so and letting table know that we in fact changed something. And actually speaking about pagination, this will be really similar, but let's have a look first in the browser. Here we see pagination. We can in fact go to new pages. We can go to the last one and we have a lot of controls. For example, I can control the page here. I can increment the page size. I can reset the filters and you see everything is defined here and also is displayed here in the URL. So how does that work? Like I said, it's similar to the sorting. We have a pagination state that is the same as sorting state. And we have a on pagination change function, which is triggered when pagination changes in the table. And again, we call set filters with our result. The only difference now is that we also have to tell the table the amount of rows. And the reason is quite simple. If we handle pagination on our backend, there's no way the table knows how many pages there are. So we have to tell them from the backend. But if you see me now pressing these buttons, you might wonder where do those buttons come from? Because in fact, our user component does not have any button. This is just the reset filters and the stringify or filters. And the buttons are in the table. Again, this is pretty much copy pasted from the official example. And actually I didn't change anything because all the pagination can still be handled through table. So these are all the button to page zero to PU's index, last page. And the magic here is really simple to the filters. We say that on sorting change is called every time we click on the adder and this function of table is fired. Now for pagination, we have pretty much the same here. We're passing a function called on pagination change that is in fact triggered every time we do table dot do something with the pages. And on our user component, we get back again on this on pagination change. And this is where we set our filters. All that really matters is that the table always know about the pagination state, that is page index and page size. It knows about how many rows there are and we react every time something changes on the pagination local state. And with that, we have a fully working table where we can filter for every field, we can sort them, we can change page, and everything is handled through query parameters with Tanstack router. And with that, we have the full integration of Tanstack table with query getting data and router handling all the data in the search param. As you notice, this was kind of a puzzle. I had to connect a lot of pieces, trying to keep them flexible and easily customizable, which means it might not be the best implementation so far, but that's fine. What I want you to get from this video is an overall idea on how to connect the dots. Then it's up to you to tailor this specifically to your own use case. And that was it. The code is as always available on GitHub if you want to have a look. And also if you want to raise a pull request or an issue, if you have some suggestion, they're more than welcome. So please do that. And with that said, Thanks for watching until this point. If you haven't subscribed already, I recommend you to do so because I talk about Tanstack quite a lot. And with that said, thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.